Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jesse Hempel. I should run, but there's no running in high heels. It's a special occasion. I wear them only once a year today. Um, Thanks for a great spirited morning. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce someone who needs absolutely no introduction in this audience. We have the CEO uh, and chairman of Dell, Michael Dell, and he'll be interviewed by um, my boss, the managing editor of Fortune, Andy Serwer. Uh, come on up, guys. Jesse Hempel's boss. Thank you. That is. Uh, an impossible task. Um, no one's Jesse's boss. Um, anyway, hey Michael, how are you doing? Great, Andy, how are you? Doing great, good to see you. How's the weather in Round Rock, Texas right now? Well, you know, in the summer in Texas, we have what I call FM weather. It's like the FM dial. It starts at 88 and it goes to 108. <laughs> right. God, I and uh, oh, it's excellent. pretty it's pretty hot, yeah. Yeah, well, same in New York. So this is why you got a Texan and a New Yorker in Aspen, Colorado. We're fleeing the, the, the miserable weather and here to talk a little bit about uh, Dell, your company. Um, Great. So uh, I was uh, outside chatting with you just a minute ago and you said, well, you know, we're really not a PC company anymore. And I was like, whoa, you know, I mean, come on, Dell, you're a PC company. You always have been a PC company 28 years now, is it? 28. 28 years. Um, and, you know, it sounds good. We're, of course, you know, we're in the post-PC era, they say. So is, is it really the case that you're not a PC company now, or is it you don't want to be a PC company in the future? Well, in the, in the last five years or so, we've really made a concerted shift in our business towards end-to-end -to -end IT solutions. And if you think about the businesses that Dell is in today, there are really, uh, you know, four of them. Certainly, we start with uh, the client business, which is kind of transforming with all the things that are going on in mobility and client virtualization, and that brings new needs in terms of security and those kinds of challenges that, that exist. The next business for us is the enterprise data center, the server storage networking business. Uh, we make about a third of the servers that are on the internet and, and mm -hmm. uh, about a third of the servers in North America you know, built a tremendous business in storage and networking, fueled by some acquisitions. We've done about 25 acquisitions in the last three or four years. Uh, and, and so that, all, all the things that are going on in cloud and virtual infrastructure, that's an enormous business for us. Mm -hmm. Then we have a software business uh, that centers around systems management, around IT security. Uh, we are seeing about 29 billion security events per day, protecting tens of trillions of dollars of assets for the biggest banks and financial uh, services firms in the world. Mm -hmm. And then of the 110,000 people at Dell, uh, about 45,000 of them are in services. And so we provide a, a broad range of, of IT services to help companies capture value from all of the, the IT that's out there. So for example, you know, let's say you you fly on a, on a one world airline, uh, you know, an airline is part of the one world alliance. Mm -hmm. How do all these airlines link their miles together? It's actually a pretty tricky problem. Uh, you know, they, they do that with the Dell cloud. So we're, you know, we're right in the middle of some of the stickiest challenges in terms of how do you connect uh, older applications to cloud applications? How do you secure and how do you modernize uh, IT environments and bring them you know, off of the old mainframe and onto the x86 platforms, put them in the Dell cloud and do it more efficiently. So it's a very different company than it was four or five years ago. Now, am I wrong or did I not hear you mention PCs there at all in that little soliloquy? I actually mentioned it very briefly at the very beginning. Okay. Uh, but but you know, certainly our business has changed quite a bit. Okay. All right. I want to do a polling question right now um, because it speaks to your product mix and your revenue mix. So why don't we do one of these polling questions, which means cue the music. By the way, Mark Andreessen did not compose this, <laughs> although he might have. Okay. Here's a question for you all. Last year, desktops and laptops accounted for 54% of Dell's revenue, down from 61% in 2008. How big will Dell's PC business 
be in five years. And you can see there 50, 54, 40, 50, 39 or less. Two votes, simply text your answer to 42345 and we will post um, those results shortly. Okay, so the other 46% uh, is what now? And then we'll You know, off. what I would argue is that, uh, you know, it, with all due respect to your polling question, mm -hmm. probably a better way to think about this is revenue and profit. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, if, right. if you sell, let's say, a billion dollars worth of PCs versus a billion dollars worth of software, right. those are going to have very different characteristics in terms of free cash flow and margin. And so this herein lies some of the difficulty in, in looking at Dell strictly from a revenue standpoint. Okay. Because the business mix is shifting. So we're already at about half of our gross margin uh, is, is not the PC. Mm -hmm. You know, last year our, our cash flow grew 39%, uh, you know, to 5.5 billion. So the business mix is changing pretty dramatically. And what, what I just kind of described is the new Dell in the last five years, that's gone from about a $10 billion business to about a $20 billion business. Okay. How, you talk about enterprise solutions, right? That's sort of the core strategy of the company. Yes. How is that different from HP's strategy? You know, one of the things that we have done in this is we, we have the, the opportunity to basically uh, approach this unencumbered by legacy. And a lot of the companies that are out there in our industry are kind of stuck with old things. And if you look at all sectors of our industry, whether it's in databases or semiconductors or systems management or apps or mobility, uh, you, know, you know, broadband, et cetera, there's always a new way to do something, right? right? And so what we have done in our organic and inorganic investments essentially is to shoot ahead of the puck. So if you think about what's going on in cloud integration and security or in client virtualization or in identity and access management and some of the challenges that companies have in making all this, this stuff work that is exciting and interesting. You know, you, you know, a lot of discussion about mobile devices and that's tremendous and, and interesting and exciting. But from an IT perspective, it's actually a huge challenge because in, you know, 10 years ago, in a, in, in a company, the device, the network, and the apps were pretty tightly controlled by the company. Mm -hmm. Now the device, the network, and the apps aren't controlled at all by the company. And so when the CIO or the CTO mm -hmm. has to go to the audit committee and explain how is it that company information found its way onto these devices that aren't owned by the company, and somehow leaked out, you know, there, there are huge challenges in, 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 in securing this. And so that, you know, those are the kind of t challenges that we're helping our customers tackle. Okay, and so how does that relate to you versus HP? I think the way it relates is that we're kind of attacking the new problems unencumbered by the legacy of the past. Run it. Another very interesting thing that, that uh, sort of came out of the, the origins of Dell was this direct business model. Right. And the ability to have contact with you know, tens of millions of small and medium-sized businesses all over the world, mm -hmm. and particularly growth companies, where, where all the growth and employment is, and you know, we're serving a lot of the startups and larger than startups here, here in this room and around the world. Those firms uh, you know, tend to be the, the, the firms that adopt new technologies first and fastest. And if you look at the technology portfolio Dell has built, it's really centered there. Uh, certainly, it can scale up to some of the biggest you know, re requirements in the world. And, and just to level set here, you know, IT is about a $3 trillion industry. Mm -hmm. And about $250 billion of the $3 trillion is consumer, and about $2.75 trillion is business, institution, government. Right. And of that $2.75 trillion, the largest portion and the fastest growing portion is kind of the middle. And so that's, that's, a, that's a place where if you look at our acquisitions, you look at our investments, that's a, that's a place where Dell you know, absolutely has a, a leadership position. You know, also, if you look in, in verticals, mm -hmm. we're number one in healthcare IT. Right. 
healthcare is a, a space that where, where you know IT is, is growing pretty rapidly, not only in this country but around the world, and it's also a highly distributed uh, industry. You know there are some large hospital groups and we serve those, but you have large numbers of practitioners and regional hospitals and that sort of thing. We have five billion medical images in our secure cloud. Very unique kind of vertical expertise to help these uh, uh, you know, medical practices run very efficiently. So if I'm to understand maybe the, then the sweet spot is small to medium businesses, um, servers to the extent that PCs are still a growth business there, and, and software solutions, is that kind of the sweet spot for you guys? Storage and data Storage. Is, is a, is a okay. big deal, certainly the network. And I would tell you, we do very well with the large customers too. Right. What's interesting about, you know, the, the, the let's think about small computer systems. When the x86 server, uh, or think of any new thing showed up, you know, social media, whatever, uh, it's usually not first adopted by the biggest companies in the world. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the barrier to adoption and acceptance is lowest in the smaller, faster, more nimble companies. And that's where, the, that's where this stuff takes off, and then you know, we, we scale it up. Right. I want to I focus in on a point you just made about the consumer, and I want to talk about Dell and the consumer. And, I, and I've heard you make this point before, that basically the consumer is 10% of enterprise, right? 250 versus 2.7. Well, of, of, the, of the $3 trillion of, of industry, three, right? you got about two point, two, $250 right. billion is, is consumer, right. $2.75 trillion right. is uh, business institution. And you, you use that fact to suggest that it's not that important for you. It's not that it's not that well, important. It's not, it's but just it's just we're more bigger, focused on, on the, the $2.75 trillion. Right, but, but of course, everyone, you know, we all talk about the consumerization of IT, okay? And... You know, it seems to me that that 250 has an outsized presence, perhaps. And, and I wonder what your consumer strategy is. I mean, we all see that everyone's gaga about the consumer. You guys have had various consumer incarnations. There was the famous Dell dude who went and got himself arrested later on. That was a difficult situation. The, the guy who played the Dell dude. Anyway, we won't have to focus on that. Um, but where did that come from? I just remembered that because it was amusing. I'm sorry. In any event, stay focused, Andy. Okay, I, I'm digressing, Michael. Maybe it's the flashback art. Um, in any event, I want to know what your relationship was with the consumer is. What is it? What do you make for the consumer, and how important is it? And how much does it tie into the enterprise from your perspective? It absolutely ties in, and you're right. The the consumerization of IT is a big deal. And the growth in mobility and you know in smartphones and tablets is is absolutely an enormous uh, part of what's going on in IT, and it has all sorts of implications across the whole you know sort of ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we, give an example. One of our customers is a company uh, in China called Tencent, yeah. and you know Tencent has like 650 million customers right. and they're all people who use phones. Right. So, you know, whenever someone gets on the internet, right, they're hitting all, the, all this data, they're pulling all this data, right. so that's driving the, the infrastructure business. Now back to the challenge of all these, this explosion in devices and data, now, you know, how do companies uh, take advantage of that to extend their businesses out to large numbers of, of their customers. What happens when those devices come into a company's environment? You know, the, the security challenges around this are pretty enormous. And right. through a series of acquisitions, we now have several thousand people at Dell that are, and we're the, the leading managed security service provider in the world. So, you know, the big banks, the-, uh, the the, the large banks, the, yeah. the uh, pharmaceutical companies, the aeronautics industry, um, anybody doing a lot of transactions, anybody who has valuable data to protect right. comes to Dell SecureWorks to secure that. So, you know, uh, and, and, and when you think about all these devices uh, with free apps where data is sort of moving around very freely, 
in, in, inside the, the smartphone, the risks and challenges that that presents to all right. these organizations that have valuable information to protect are pretty enormous. So the way I hear you tell it, I mean, it seems like you don't really even compete against Apple. I mean, it's a complementary business, isn't it? Isn't Apple just a, is a complementary business to Dell? We are not competing with them in many places that, that they play, for sure. Where are you competing with them? Uh, certainly in, in PCs, and, right. and I think you'll see us also in tablets with Windows 8. Um, but if you look at the, the, the real engine of their business in terms of the, the, the iPhone, you know, we're securing iPhones, and, and, and we're managing iPhones uh, and, and helping customers deal with the challenge of how do they integrate that into their IT environment successfully. And of course, Android and all the other you know, right. you know, uh, smartphones that are, that are out there. Right. You, um, I believe, have announced or are going to announce a $60 million venture fund. Have you announced it or are you, or are you ready? We're, 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 we're absolutely announcing a $60 million venture fund focused just on storage. You're going to announce it right here, right now? Announcing it right here, right okay, now. Okay, that's it. Um, Doing it. You know, Dell, Dell actually has a long history of seed investments in interesting technology companies. So we were a very early investor in VMware, mm -hmm. very early investor in Fusion IO, a uh, number of other companies. Not all of them worked out as well as, as some of those, but, right. but you know, we really believe in this uh, explosion of data driven a lot by smartphones, tablets. And what's really interesting is when you go look at companies uh, particularly companies with, let's say, less than 50,000 people or less than 10,000 people. There are enormous numbers of them. Right. And as they're starting to store huge quantities of data, are they actually using that data to make better decisions in real time about their business? Right. Very, very few of them are. Right. And so that's, a, that's an enormous opportunity. There are a number of firms out there addressing that. We're certainly addressing it in terms of data protection, data management, how do, you, how do you store all this data? And beginning to help customers capture value from it. How do you integrate all, all this? So I want to go to the cloud, but I have uh, you know, older apps and I have cloud. I want to connect two cloud things together. How do I do that? Well, that's, that's, you know, the, the, those are the kind of capabilities we provide our customers. Right, so just to give us a headline on this. So you are uh, initiating a $60 million venture fund to invest in storage and cloud startups? Is that it, accurate? It, it, this is actually just on storage. Just we, on storage, okay. We're, we're okay. Do, doing other investments, but this is specifically focused on storage. Storage has been a huge area for Dell. We acquired Equalogic and Compellent and a few other companies in the storage area and have built a rather large and fast growing storage business with our own IP now. Right. And you know, we, we see this as an area of continuing innovation. And also what you're seeing is the, the, uh, the, the, you're seeing this converged architecture emerge in the data center where the line between a server and a storage and a network is sort of disappearing as you get virtualization, you get in-memory computing, flash is showing up inside these servers. And, it, and it's allowing for lots of new applications and lots of new uses for this data. Right. I, it, it sounds very compelling, uh, Michael. Your stock did take a pretty big hit this spring, though, and I, I'm wondering what that's about. Yeah, I think um, the, the, the market's been pretty tough, Andy. I yeah. hear you on that. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it got taken a, little, a hit maybe a little bit worse in the market, though. Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I think I, I think we'll see about that, you know, as, 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 the, as the, 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 you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the market decide what the right price is for our stock. You know, our job is to build a great company. Okay. And Fair to enough. do so, uh, really not thinking about, um, you know, okay, are, are these actions going to, in a short period of time, cause our stock price to go up or down? You know, I've been doing this for 28 years. I'd like mm -hmm. to be doing it for, you know, many, many more years mm -hmm. to come. And so if you look at our results, they've been... Uh, relatively volatile, generally in the upward direction, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know we're we're making uh, pretty significant changes in the, the the nature and the portfolio of our business, and I think doing it in a fairly fearless way. You know we we've spent 
almost five billion dollars just so far this year on acquisitions right. in changing the the profile of the company, uh, investing you know billions organically as well. I should point out that you came back to be CEO five years ago. Is it two thousand seven? Right. Um, so you know, interesting perspective there. Another interesting thing that is uncommon or increasingly uncommon, I should say, is that you own thirteen percent. Uh, roughly of your company's stock? Something like that. Something like that. What do you think about these um, new companies um, where the founders um, seem to want to hang on to control of the stock by ha issuing two classes? That would be nice, yeah. I kind of, yeah. Uh, how come you didn't do it? <laughs> um, you know, I didn't, didn't, re didn't really uh, think about it. I, I... Shoot. I don't know. It should ask me, you know, 25 years ago. <laughs> I guess so. Um, all right, so you can see no, here. No, I, I, I haven't really had issues there. Well, but it's uh, interesting because you've retained a, a measure of control of the company. I mean, does it afford you to take a longer term view? I think that, that, you know, I think it's important to be able to understand the perspective of, of shareholders. And if you have a structure that somehow doesn't allow you to uh, to, to, to do that or, or blinds you to it, I don't think that's, I wouldn't think that's a particularly good idea, uh, you know, it, both as an investor and, 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 as a, and as a founder of a company. All right, I may take that as a bit of an indictment. Um, you can see here, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the winning vote was C, which is 39% or less. Um, I, I endorse this message. You do? Yes. So we are clearly living in the post-PC world. Where you know, well, what's interesting about this term that you mm -hmm. use, the post PC world, is that it was first coined when there were about a hundred million PCs sold a year, and now there are. When was that roughly? Uh, it was around um, uh, 1999, mm -hmm. um, and now there are about 380 million PCs sold per year. So apparently, the post PC world. You know, post-PC age has been pretty good for the PC. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, I want to open up uh, the floor to questions. How many questions out there? We've got one right here from the senator from Massachusetts. <laughs> Please identify yourself, Senator. It's, it's Michael Schrage. The, the, there's another word you, you mentioned, you didn't mention, you said PCs. You, you mentioned it briefly, direct. When I covered Dell, you had figured out how to do direct for servers and all these things, and it was a remarkable business model. It was lean, people emulated it, some with greater success, some with lesser success. As you move more into the systems, marrying clouds, et cetera, does that direct model that you began in your dorm room, is that just like a, an anachronistic memory, or is it still the core of the yeah. next generation of innovation? How does it you? fit in? I think that's it's a great It's still question. incredibly important to us, and you know we have uh, we, we, we have about two billion interactions per year with customers and you know when I think about the relationships we have with the world's biggest companies and all sorts of small and medium sized companies, that direct relationship is incredibly important. Having said that, you know, as we have products and services and offerings that have, uh, uh, you, know, you know, let's say a much higher gross margin, a software like gross margin, we actually want to have incredibly wide distribution and reach. And so having a network of partners, and we, we now have about 110,000 partners around the world that uh, you know, sell our solutions as part of what they do. And so direct is still incredibly important to us. It's still you know, the, the significant uh, you know, majority of our business. But we also have the, this partner uh, aspect of the business all the businesses that we've acquired were, were partner-driven, uh, even if we were one of the, the biggest partners of the, of the companies we've acquired. Um, but it's, it, it, you know, d Direct continues to be, Dell.com continues to be a very important asset for us, and that relationship with, with customers is... It's not, your, it's not your future. I think the relationship with customers is an enduring asset and an important asset. We have absolutely flipped the business to, to, to uh, emphasize intellectual property, 
product, design, uh, and, and so you know, there, there are, there are you know, aspects of our, of our past that are you know, important and valuable, uh, but clearly as we move more into software and into converged infrastructure, uh, you know, the billion dollars of a year we're investing in R&D, the 5,000 patents we have issued and, and applied for, that is incredibly important to, to Dell's future. Michael, what about your um, business in China? Um, what is that like, and are you feeling the effects of any slowdown there? It's on the order of a $5 billion business, so it's a sizable business for us. It's the largest business outside the United States. I can tell you that, th that uh, there are some challenges in China right now. What's going to be more specific, please? I mean, it's very, it's a really important topic, I think, for everyone. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there uh, in, in early September uh, with our board of directors. Um, so I can give you a better update after that. Um, but, you know, I think, I think um, uh, you know, generally speaking, the, the demand for, for technology in China is tremendous. Um, you know, we, we think about 60% of the Chinese internet, internet runs on Dell servers. Mm -hmm. And so we had a huge success in selling our infrastructure solutions to those Chinese companies. Uh, anybody who's doing anything mission critical, like a stock exchange, a bank, a power grid, you know, those are our customers. You know, we're, we're designing the IT architecture for, you know, a lot of the key state-owned enterprises with our services group. Right, and we acquired Bearing Point, you know, to be able to kind of fuel that. So we're, our business is is uh, fully integrated in China across all aspects, and it's 100% Dell owned. So we 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 love the business and important business, and emerging markets are are a big deal for us because, uh, you know, the next billion users are coming from these countries and the the next ten beyond. Yeah, uh, but but are you seeing a slowdown in sales growth in China? That would be an accurate statement. Yes. Okay. Other questions, right here. Oops. Hi, Michal Abram with the Fortune. Um, can you talk a little bit more about this new storage fund? What kind of technologies or companies do you expect to invest in? And I know you said you're an investor in um, Fusion IO. Is flash memory a big thing for you guys? Um, it'd be great to hear a little bit more. Yeah, what's what's happening in in if flash memory is is kind of an interesting place to 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 start because if you think about the relationship between uh, you know servers and and storage and 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 how sort of performance occurs and apps are distributed now what we're able to do is put large amounts of memory and we've actually designed this ourselves into our 12th generation servers that we're shipping now, put you know, several terabytes of memory directly in the server. We acquired a little company that gives us cache coherency across a large number of servers. And so you go, start to rethink what is, you know, what's a server, what's a storage, what's the network when you have virtualization and now you have 50 virtual machines, 100 virtual machines, 500 virtual machines in one. Uh, so the, the storage world is really getting shaken up a, a tremendous amount. So these are the kind of things we'll be investing in. And you'll see us be continuing to, you know, continue our acquisitions in that area. The, the, the idea behind the venture fund, of course, is to get out in front and fund some of these new ideas uh, that, that, you know, that, that, that we think are going to be interesting and important. I can do two more quick questions. We have one here and one here. Hi. Okay. Heidi Sinclair with Weber Shamwick. So, Michael, you've done an amazing job of transforming the business, creating the new Dell. But one could argue that the Dell brand and reputation continues to lag that transformation. So I'm curious what you're doing to revitalize your brand going forward. It's, it's, it's important for us to get out and explain what we're doing because a lot of people remember Dell for what we did five years ago or 10 years ago. And you know, when, when I get in front of a group of 25 CIOs or CTOs and explain what Dell is today, you know, there, there's a lot of, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you, you, you did all that. So you know, we have 20,000 uh, 
direct salespeople, you know, that, that are in the field and, and talking to customers. And so that's sort of our, our frontline army. Uh, certainly there are all sorts of other media forms that we can use to get that message out. Uh, you know, I think as we, every time we acquire another company, like we're just acquiring Quest Software, we acquired Wise, we acquired SonicWall. You know, as we acquire these companies, it gives us an opportunity to tell the story uh, again and potentially to a whole new group of customers. You know, uh, SonicWall has, has a million customers and some of them are Dell customers, but some of them aren't Dell customers. So we, we have to continually get out and, and explain, you know, what it is we're doing. Uh, in December this year, we're going to have an, a, a second uh, Dell World event. So we'll have 5,000 customers come to Austin, Texas, spend a few days, and they'll get completely immersed in everything that we're doing, uh, you know, present day and, and future oriented. And when people, you know, come away from an event like that, they come with a very deep understanding. Uh, but it, it's, it's the, the, a lot of evangelism is, is required. I think because the company had such a rapid rise on a relatively monolithic uh, and, and pretty easy to understand uh, you know, business model, and now it's a, it's a pretty different company. I want to just do, we're to squeeze in one more quick question even though we're over time. Uh, Steve Stott from Translation. Michael, what would you say um, the lack of innovation on the software windows has done to affect uh, PC sales? And with this, have you, uh, pull back your investment in R&D on PCs? If I, if I look at the billion dollars that we're investing in R&D, it is heavily oriented toward what I'll call the new Dell. And certainly when you have a, an ecosystem like the one you're referring to, and for whatever reason, you know, it changes or uh, there are new you know, factors involved, I think all the participants you know, are likely to change w what they do. Certainly we're finding for you know, great return on our capital and you know, future growth opportunities, I've kind of laid out where Dell is investing. One thing I will say about the, the, the client environment, we're seeing an absolutely massive S-curve adoption of client virtualization. And one of the reasons is all of this stuff that's going on with mobility. So if you're a company and you have people that are now bringing their own PCs to work, they have tablets, they have smartphones, but you have all these older kind of PC applications, how do you make all that work? Well, you, you know, and everybody knows about server virtualization, so now they're virtualizing the client. And we acquired the leading company in that space. We're number one in the world, and it's, it's growing at a very, very rapid rate. And you know we're seeing you know huge projects, ten, fifty thousand uh, kind of seat projects, where the 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 client is now in the data center, right. and it's a virtual client, and you access it with whatever device you want, uh, anywhere you are, and you build in security, uh, you know th through that through that virtual session to the mobile device, so that the CIO can actually go explain uh, how this works and still keep their job. Okay, still keep their job. Um, I got to get us moving here, otherwise I won't be able to do that. So um, let's uh, thank Michael Dell for coming thank here. You. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you, Michael. That's Jesse. Thank Apple. you, Andy.